Hello everybody! Today we're here to talk about some right triangle math. That's our next installment for these little lectures. There are a lot of things in physics that you can do with right triangle math, and so it's important to be able to understand all the different components. The goals for today, we're going to first identify some patterns in right triangles. After that, we're going to learn how to use the sine, cosine, and tangent functions, and we're going to spend some time making sure we all understand how an inverse trig function works. Let's take a look at a triangle here. If it's a right triangle, it could look like this, maybe this, could look like that big guy there, but what they will all have in common is they must have that 90 degree angle. Usually we identify that with these little boxes in the corners here. Let's take this right triangle here to talk about a couple things. The first thing that we can say is that the hypotenuse is the name that we give the longest side of the right triangle. It is always opposite of the right angle. We can also say that the angles within a right triangle, any triangle for that matter, must add up to 180 degrees. You can chip away at this a little bit, and you can also say that angles A plus B must equal 90 degrees as a shortcut. Let's go back and have a look at this triangle here and look at a property of triangles. If I wanted to grow this triangle, you can see I put a bigger blue triangle behind it. You can see that angle A is the same for both of those triangles. According to the rule I had up before, if A plus B must always equal 90, then angle B must be the same for both triangles. I could do it again. I could put up the red one behind both of those. Again, I've grown this triangle, but I've maintained the same angles. Just so happens for these triangles, I've done some calculations in advance, and I can say that angle A is equal to 27.3 degrees. Angle B is 62.7 degrees, but we'll come back to that shortly. Let's leave out the blue one for a bit, but look at the smaller green triangle and the larger red triangle. I can clearly say that every side of the red triangle is larger than that of the corresponding green side. So let's look instead at two sides of one triangle. I'm going to go ahead and pick the hypotenuse and the vertical side of this green triangle. What I'm really looking at is the length of the side. I'm going to identify that with these little double arrows that are labeled A and C. C is the hypotenuse. While we're at it, let's go ahead and grab those same things for the big red triangle and see what we can do. I'm going to pick up and move these lines to the top of the screen, maintaining their lengths. I've also put a little vertical hash mark at the halfway point of the longer sides, the hypotenuse of both triangles. From that, we can see that the the vertical sides, what I've labeled as A, those are a little bit less than half the length of the hypotenuse. Again, from some previous calculations, I can tell you that it's actually at about 45.9% the length. And sure enough, if we go down and look at that little green triangle, it also, the A side, the vertical side, is 45.9% the length of the longer side. This is a property that holds true for these triangles. If you have the same angles on the interior of the triangles, I can take a ratio of the length of the sides, which is what I'm doing here. And that ratio should be constant no matter the size of the triangle. This is really where our trig functions come into play. There's an observation that I can compare any two of the three sides of a triangle. I can make a comparison between lengths A and B, I could compare B and C, or I might compare A and C. From this, we get three different trig functions. They are called sine, cosine, and tangent. We tend to use a three-letter abbreviation for each of them, so S-I-N for sine, C-O-S for cosine, and T-A-N for tangent. Now let's take a look at how we're going to use these trig functions. If I arrive on a triangle, I may not have the same notation that somebody else does. All I see is a triangle with these different parameters that are currently unknown. It might be oriented like this, it might be oriented like this, so it doesn't really do me any good to say the top side or the left side or the bottom side. What I can always say is that that is the hypotenuse. So remember, it's always opposite of the 90 degree angle. The other two sides of the triangle are called the opposite and the adjacent sides, but we still need to figure out how we're going to be consistent from one person to another to know what sides we're talking about. So what we do is you have to pick an angle. I'm showing a little eyeball at the bottom left here that says I'm looking from that perspective, from my angle A, 
as I identified before. The opposite side is this time opposite of that angle. So it's the vertical side. The adjacent side is what is right next to the angle that is not the hypotenuse. Somebody else might come in and they might say, well, I'm going to look at this triangle from this side. From perspective B, the bottom side is now the opposite and the vertical side is the adjacent. This is fine and we can still handle this. So let's look at our first trig function. I'm choosing to look at sine and it says sine of a particular angle. Now you have to choose which angle are you looking at. I'm going to say that we're looking from the bottom left where I've put my little eyeball. That sets in place that the opposite side is the vertical and that the adjacent is the base that I'm showing here. The sine trig function always says sine of whatever angle you're looking at is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse side. Now that's a lot to look at and a lot to write every time, so people abbreviate this quite a bit. This is typically what you might see. Sine theta is equal to op over height. We're saying opposite over hypotenuse. And remember, it's really the length of those sides that you're talking about there. So we have the sine function, which is opposite over hypotenuse. We also have the cosine function, which is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And we have the tangent function, which is opposite over adjacent. People have come up with a little rhyme to help remember this, which is Sokotoa. It's never been very useful to me because I can never remember how to spell Sokotoa without first thinking sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, but hopefully you are less helpless than I am. But you can see how this little rhyme Sokotoa can be used to help remember which trig functions correspond to what sides. So let's go back to this triangle that we were using before, where the vertical side was about 45.9% that of the hypotenuse. If I want to use the sine function to describe this, what I can do is I can say sine of 27.3 degrees, I'm using that because that's the angle I have to look at if I want to actually grab the opposite side of A. So sine of 27.3 degrees is equal to the ratio of A divided by the hypotenuse C, and that is equal to 0.459, which is the same as 45.9%. Can we compare different sides of the triangle? Of course we can. If I instead wanted to look at the comparison of side B, versus the hypotenuse. I've put my lines up there. You can, you can see that B is clearly much longer than A was. I can still use my sine function to look at this, but this time I would have to look from the perspective of the other angle. So sine of 62.7 is still equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's always true. And in this case, if I type that into a calculator, I find that it is 0 0.889. That tells me that B is 88.9% the length of the hypotenuse there. If I wanted to, I could find this same information by using a different trig function. I could instead use cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. This time I'm going to use the 27.3 degree angle, but with cosine, because that is the correct trig function and angle to compare B and C. And I would find, with my little calculator, I would still get 0.889. If I want to look at the two sides that are not related to the hypotenuse, then I have to use the tangent function. I could look at this from the perspective of the 27.3 degree angle, and then I would be looking at the ratio of A divided by B. A looks to be about half the length of B, and so it should be about 0.5, and you can see what it is more precisely there. If I took the tan function and looked from the other side of things, I would still be looking at opposite over adjacent, which in this case would be B over A, that should be closer to about two. It's about twice the size of A. And of course I get a number that would round up to two. I can use these for all sorts of neat little tricks. For example, if you are sitting way far away from a mountain, you happen to maybe take out your GPS and you know that you are located 7.09 kilometers away from the peak of the mountain, you can make a little triangle out of this. You can measure how far you have to look up beyond the horizontal, get an angle out of that. In this case, I'm going to say that we measure 13.8 degrees. And from this information, I can figure out how tall the mountain is above my location. 
To do this, I would use the tan function because it is the opposite side of the triangle from my 13.8 degrees that I'm really interested in. That's the height of the mountain. I would plug in the information I know. I would say tangent of 13.8 is equal to the opposite, that's my unknown at the, at the moment, divided by 7.09 kilometers. I could do a little algebra on this, multiply the 7.09 to the other side, type this all into my calculator, and I could find that the height is equal to 1.74 kilometers. There's one last thing that we need to talk about. Let's say that I have another triangle. This time I've made it slightly different shaped. Let's say that this is the only starting information that I have for my triangle. I know the length of two sides. If I want to characterize this entire triangle, which includes knowing those interior angles, I'm going to look from the perspective of angle A, which will lead me to the cosine function, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. I get set up this expression that says cosine of A is equal to 3.03 .03 divided by 5.58. According to the normal rules of algebra, I'm a little bit stuck. I cannot just get rid of the COS by normal means. I'm talking about things like subtraction, division. I can't get rid of it that way. What I have to do to manipulate out the A is I have to use something called the inverse cosine function. I'm going to apply the inverse cosine function as identified by the little superscript negative 1 to both sides of the equation. You can see highlighted in blue, there's the original equation. So I've done this to both sides. This allows me to cancel out the inverse cosine and cosine on the left hand side here. So inverse cosine operating on cosine gives unity. That gives me a 1. That's the only way I can get this A out of it. So now I'm left with this equation that says A is equal to the inverse cosine of the ratio. Type that into my calculator and I get that A is 57.1 degrees. From there I could go in and plug in my 57.1 degrees and then at this stage it's usually pretty easy to find the rest of your information. 90 minus 57.1 will give me my other angle up there and I could use the Pythagorean theorem to come up with that vertical side. Let's take a look at the key points. We've said that the sine, cosine, and tangent functions relate the angles of a right triangle to the ratio of lengths for any two sides of those triangles. I've always thought that that's a little bit cluttered to say it that way, but all of those words are important. Sine does not look at the length of a side on a triangle. What it does is it looks at a comparison between two different lengths of two sides of that triangle through a ratio. Remember you always have this rhyme Sokotoa to help you remember which trig function looks at which of the two of three sides of any particular triangle. Also you need to remember to use inverse trig functions when you're trying to pull the angle out of a sine, cosine, or a tangent when you're solving for it. That wraps up what I wanted to talk about for right triangle math. So as usual, if you think you got a handle on things, let your computer screen know.